Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and in this episode we're going to be doing the Waves for RC. So this is going to be the first in a short series about animating RC Shack. Don't worry if you haven't made the scene, as I'll be quickly going through how you can make each of the objects that I'm animating at the start of each video. I do have a beginner's animation series, so I suggest you have a quick look at the first few episodes of that to get you introduced to the ideas of animation. In this particular episode, we're looking at the waves of the sea and how to animate using displacement. In later episodes, I'll be talking about animating the flag and the fish and other things. But for now, let's have a look at the waves. Okay, so we've got our sea here. And if we go into edit mode, you'll see that the top of it is all wavy. Or you might have decimated it and have unusual topology. Well, in this case, we probably want to start off with a nice flat top so that we can animate it. So we'll delete that. I'll create a new one. If you remember how I created it, I used a plane. So Shift A to add, mesh plane. My shortcut keys are down the bottom here. I'm going to scale that plane up to start with, and then go to top view with seven on my numpad, and just move it into position until I'm happy that it's roughly the same size as my sand. There we go, just a touch smaller. Now I want to move this into position, so G then Z, and move it into position so the boat is just sitting on top, somewhere around there, and into edit mode. So tab on your keyboard, and let's subdivide this. Right click to go to the subdivide menu, subdivide just there, and down here we can change it to 20. I'll minimize that again. Now let's select all the faces by pressing three on my keyboard or faces up here. E to extrude and pull them down in the Z. If it's not stuck to the Z, then you might need to press Z to make it stick to the Z axis. Okay, that's fine. Now let's just quickly go to wireframe mode, Z and then wireframe, or you can choose wireframe up here. And we've got all these faces at the bottom and we don't really need these. So if we're optimizing for games as it were, then I can press delete on those faces and get rid of them all. Because there's no point, they're in the middle of the sand and we can't see them. Back to solid mode. Now I did bevel my edges, so I might do that. Two on my keyboard and Alt left click on each of these edges. Shift Alt to select multiple edge loops. So Shift Alt left click and Control B to bevel. Move your mouse out slightly and I've got one subdivision. So if I go to my bevel modifier here, I've got two segments, sorry. So you can see there's two segments to it. That's great, let's see what that looks like in rendered mode. Now we want to add our materials, so we go and find our materials, so let's go to shading. Under the materials we can find our water, hopefully you've named it, but it'll be the transparent one. And just there. So now we want the top to be wavy. I'm still in shading mode, that'll be fine for now. I want to select all the vertices at the top, or all the faces, edges, whatever it might be at the top. In fact I'll go to vertex mode because it is vertices we're dealing with here. But it doesn't make any difference really. Now what I want to do is to tell Blender to only add the displacement modifier that I'm about to add to the top so the waves are the only thing affected. So I need some way of grouping these vertices. Well, you can come down here to the object data and there's what's called vertex groups. Hence why I chose vertices rather than edges or faces because they're called vertex groups. But it doesn't matter if you happen to have face mode on, it would do the same thing. But we'll go to vertices for now. Make sure they're all selected. And I want to create a new group, so the plus sign here. And I'm going to call this waves. You can call it whatever you like, water top or something like that. Press enter. Then I want to assign these vertices to this group, so assign. Now let's just check that works. So if I press deselect now, that's deselected that group. And if I press select, it will select that waves group. So I know it's worked and that is part of this waves vertex group. And that information is now part of this object. They can be very useful vertex groups, so it's worth understanding this. So we want to add a displacement modifier to this. So let's go to the spanner or the wrench, add modifier, and there's displacement or displace. Nothing happens to start with because we've got no texture running our displacement. And you'll notice what I've got, I've pulled out another panel here. I'm just going to bring it to what you would see, so join area in the middle there, and you'll see something like this. So I pulled this out and added a new panel in because I want to be able to see the texture panel. So there's the texture panel. It's the same as the texture panel here, but I like to be able to have my displacement modifier 
under the modifiers and then the texture down here so I can see it. So if I add a new texture here, so this is gonna be a texture that drives our displacement. So the white bits will move upwards or outwards, I should say, and the black bits will stay in place. So we add a new texture. There's nothing there at the moment because we need to add our texture, but just so you understand, this is texture.001 and this is also texture.001. So we know that they're linking the same texture and it says displacement at the top as well, or displace. If I change the name here to water displace, you'll see that it changes over here. So you know they're both linked. So this texture material is in here. So let's add a type of texture. We could choose an actual image texture or movie as it suggests here, but we can also choose something like clouds and you can see the clouds there. So like I say, the white bits will be pushed out and the black bits won't be. So you can see this will create a wavy kind of texture. So now over here, nothing's changed because you don't see the effects of most modifiers in edit mode, unless you go across here and see the effects in edit mode here. And you can see it's made a huge mess. Well, the first thing we want to do is we've got direction and we might as well change it to the Z axis. So it'll only be going up or down. And you can see that working, that it's not being pushed out to the side, but it's affecting all the bottom vertices as well. Well, that's where we can use our vertex group. If I click in here, there's the vertex groups wave and now it only affects the top. The last thing to do is to just bring down the strength. Let's go into object mode now so we can actually see the results and that's working fairly well, probably down a bit more with the strength. Let's turn overlays off just for a quick moment so we can see it working and right click and shade smooth. There we go, that's looking great. Now what we can do is the simple way of animating is to change the size. So you can see that when I change the size, it looks like there's waves happening. Now that's a very simplistic way of doing it, which does work and you can get a looping animation out of it, but it's not the best way. But for those of you that are new to animation, maybe that's a good place to start. So I'll show you how to get that to work. So let's go up to the animation tab up here and just zoom out so we can see all our object. Here's our camera view at the moment. And you can see that I've animated my camera in a circle, which I do have a tutorial on. If you would like to have a look at that, there'll be a card in the corner at the moment. And we can use this timeline across the bottom here to animate that texture. So let's quickly go to that texture again. And this button at the end here is animate property or set a keyframe. So if we set a keyframe there, you can see a keyframe has been added at the beginning. Then we can go across to the end of our animation, which is 250 for me. You can reset your endpoint down the bottom here. And let's change the size just a touch to something like 0.9. And I accidentally moved my playhead without pressing the keyframe button. So that kind of reset it. So let's try that again to 0.9 and then press the keyframe button. And now it's keyframed and you can see the sort of waviness. Now that's a very cheap way of doing it because you can see actually the size changes and the waves get bigger and smaller. What we could do is about halfway, 125 frames. We could set this to something like 0.5. So I'll set a keyframe there, but I'll actually copy this keyframe from here. Control C over to here, Control V and it's pasted that keyframe in. So you can copy and paste the keyframes. You can also click and shift D to duplicate and drag it across the other side. And you can see there's a slight looping animation. It's pretty rough though, in terms of quality, not in terms of the C. So it is working, but it's not great. A much better way, but certainly a more complicated way is to have some sort of object driving this texture and moving it across the water. So with my C selected, I will delete the keyframes for that texture's size by pressing A in the timeline to select all the keyframes and press delete, delete keyframes. Now I'm going to add an empty to move this texture. So shift A, empty, plane axis, and let's scale that up a bit. Empties are exactly that. They're just empty objects that don't get rendered, but they're very useful and move it roughly to one side of our object. Let's go to top view for that and move it over to here and go to the beginning of our animation. Now to set a keyframe here, I press I and press location and let's just simply move it across to the other side. So up to frame 250, G to grab and move it to the other side, I to set a keyframe for the location again. Now we've got two keyframes and it moves between the two. And now we want this to influence our waves. So click on our C, go to the displacement modifier. 
and we have an option under texture coordinates and we can use an object and we can select our empty with this pipette here and now this object will drive our texture and I can press play and as the object moves across our C changes but notice how our texture seems more detailed and the waves are moving much more rapidly well that's because I resized my empty and the scale is actually taken into account and will affect the texture so if I scale it now you can see that affecting the texture so a good idea is to reset our scale control A reset our scale now it's all at one that will make more sense but it does look like we need to change the texture size to make the waves look better we can select our C go into the texture again and bring up the size. Now it only goes to two when you drag it, so you'll need to click on it and type in a number. Now let's see what effect that's having. And that certainly looks a bit nicer. And we can also change the effects of the height by going to the actual displacement and pushing up or down our displacement, so perhaps a little lower with 0 0.05. And it's a very mild, calm C. But you can see that when it gets to the end, it jumps. So if you don't want the jump, it gets slightly more complicated still. What we'll need to do is set this in a loop so the starting point is the same point as the end point. So the empty ends up in this place at the end so it can start off again from this point. So let's click on our empty. Now a simple way would be to select the end frame, drag it into the middle with G to grab, and select the beginning frame, copy, and paste that at the end. Now we have an animation that goes across to one side and then back again to this side. But you can see in the middle here that there's a slight pause and it goes backwards and that might not be desirable. The other way is to create a circle and have it go in a circle and therefore you won't see a sharp change in direction. And for those interested, I'll go through that now. So let's go to the beginning frame and I'll delete the keyframes for this now. So A to select all, delete the keyframes. Otherwise, it will go along a circle and be moving all over the place as well. Shift right click to set my cursor here. Shift A to add and make sure it's a curve circle, not a mesh circle. So curve circle. Scale that up a touch. And I want the empty to be parented to this circle. So select the empty first. Shift select the circle and control P and then follow path. And you can see it's following that path and going around. It only goes 100 frames at the moment. We can easily sort that out by clicking on the curve, go to the curve properties, under path animation, change that to the length of your animation. So 250 in my case. And that's going around nicely. But it's also spinning, which is causing our texture to spin, which is a bit of a pain. So we can turn off follow, and therefore it will keep its orientation and just go round, which looks a little better. The only other thing that you might experience is this black line here. Now that's the point of the circle it's on and it's got its own position. You might want to position that so it's in the same place, so it actually follows your circle. It makes it a bit easier to understand. And you can see my waves undulating now and they loop nicely. Now changing the circle size will change the size of your empty as well, so be careful of that. So the empty is nice and big now, we've got some waves but our texture is moving in a bigger circle, which you might want. But just be aware that you will need to scale down your empty or, at this point, reset the scale. So there we have it, a looping wave animation using the displacement modifier. In the next episode, I'll be talking about rigging with bones and we'll be making the flag move and the fish swim. If you have any thoughts or ideas, then do comment below. But until next time, thanks for watching.